Dr. Sim. <laughs> okay, he is an advisor of the organizing uh, committee. And uh, we get advice from him uh, how we can uh, properly do it. And he gave important advice to us, his uh, spiritual advice. Uh, how shall we walk in the Lord so that the presence of the Lord may go with us? So this is the most precious thing that we, we learn from him. And by the way, I uh, just want to introduce to you Dr. Sim is actually the one who sparked revival 30 years ago in Malacca. And uh, we have this privilege uh, to invite him. He is actually currently and his wife reside in uh, Brisbane, Australia. Today, uh, they come back to Malacca for, for their spiritual children. <laughs> and uh, we are so thankful that we have this opportunity to invite Dr. Sim and also his wife, Debbie. And uh, without further ado, I just want to welcome him because this is our great honour to have him here. And he's going to share the Word of God with us. Let's put our hand welcome him. Amen. Thank you. It's our great honour. Good morning. <laughs> it's so good to be here. And I just met some of the DLS, the students, with Dr. Vernon Ford. They are here today too. I was so blessed, you know, to have met uh, Pastor David. When I saw him, I thought, wow, this is really a man of God. Man that loves God man who has a total commitment to God. And I believe if you come to this place, you are in the right place. And with all the meetings here, I thought I must come and join you. <laughs> For all the feasting. <laughs> it's also good to meet uh, Aaron and Florence. So anointed. Can we import you to Australia? <laughs> Hope Church uh, are very good friends to us. Uh, I know Dr. Wilson, the founder in uh, the Hope Church movement, many years ago in Australia when he was moving from Melbourne to Brisbane. And my two sons uh, also was helping uh, in the Hope Church at the time when they started, also plays the guitar, but not as good as Aaron. <laughs> and... Uh, and we also got two beautiful daughters-in-law from Hope Church. My, uh, that's I praise God. I believe Hope Church carries a lot of anointing on all the beautiful ladies of God. So we are very blessed to have uh, Jennifer, the eldest son's wife, and also the third, Joshua's wife, also Phoebe from, uh, what do you call that, from Hope Church. I want to share something very fundamental, something that was, uh, hope that it will be a blessing to you. A few years ago, my dead son, Joshua, uh, came to me and said, Dad, can we go for a holiday? I always enjoy, really, family that can go together, and my eldest boy does that all the time. Daniel, and he goes, back to Hope Church. Every time he's invited by Hope Church to speak to the business group of people, uh, Daniel Sim. And anyway, he always brings one of his children every year to some place out of Australia just to spend time, quality time with them. Just, and I thought that in the end of the day, the four children, and we got one Abigail. <laughs> Thank God for Abigail. And uh, they really enjoyed dad and mom, you know, for taking time to spend with them into the places for them to be just alone with each one of them. And this time it's my third son, uh, Joshua. 
Joshua is busy. He's very busy with his work and he's taking care of the high-rise building of a company in Brisbane, now promoted to Melbourne, and he's going around to every state to share with all the executives of that blessed company. We have heard of Mervac. Mervac is listed in the stock market in Singapore. I mean, Brisbane. Brisbane and a lot of Singaporeans are also investing into that company. So anyway, we said, good, let's go. I said, where are you going? He says, let's take a cruise, right, from uh, Brisbane to New Zealand. I've not taken a cruise before. I've taken a river cruise, but I'm not taking a ship in the sea. So anyway, we went. Uh, we spent about nearly a week over in New Zealand. Sorry, I have to be very honest with you. I didn't really enjoy, enjoy the trip there because there's nothing to do, a lot of food to eat. <laughs> a lot of food, a lot of drinks. I mean, I don't drink alcohol, but there's a lot of food provided inside the that, inside that ship. But we spend good time. My son, Joshua, and myself, every morning we'll walk from one end of the ship to the other end. That's what it's our morning exercise. And then once in a while he goes to swimming. I don't join him. He goes to the library. I will be in my room anyway. So but the whole week I, I brought my Bible. But I somehow sort of thought that I just want to be at peace with God, not opening up the word, but just be silent in God's presence for the one week. By the end of the week. You know, I, two verses that came to me impressed deeply over the week. And I, I knew those two verses. And I want to share this with you because I want to share some things with you for the days that are ahead of you, uh, that it will be a blessing to you. You know, the two verses are very familiar. I believe many of you would know that. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your steps. Amen? Amen. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Some of us are students here. Some of us are business people here. Whatever you do, can I say this to you? I think those are fundamental verses to help you and to help me to make the right decision. Because in life, you will be making decisions. You know, which university you want to, to go further, what business you want to be involved in, which beautiful lady or man that you're going to marry. You know, you need to seek God. You need to really ask God what God wants to do. I just came back, actually, uh, I was not feeling well. I thought that I was not going to come back, but anyway, some friends from Singapore and here, good friends, they wrote to me without knowing that I was not feeling well and said that, please come back. We want you to come back to Singapore, the head of the banks in Singapore, a very good friend uh, in Singapore. We're over 20 over years, we've been good friends. So she didn't know what was happening to me in Australia. But she wrote some good words, verses to me that I thought that he said, please come back. Very dear friend of mine in Singapore. She's the head of the Bank Association of Banks, Director General. So when I heard her writing to me without knowing my condition, I knew that the Lord must be speaking to me. So I finally decided to come back with my 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 wife that has gone back to heaven, the niece, who is now in the Texas, as one of the directors of Texas Instruments here. And she wrote to me and also said, please come back. So I told Debbie, my wife, I think the Lord wants us to come back. And in coming back, I was blessed. So blessed that I met Pastor David, you know, the team of leadership from the Maraca Parade. That night, they prayed for me. It's good to have good friends. You know, thank God for all the pastors and the spouses. 
they prayed for me. And that very night, something happened. You know, I felt, wow, something has happened. The healing has begun to flow through my body. And I was revitalized completely, healed completely through that night. Yeah, to give God glory. God was not late, but it was important that I came back. I think to meet Pastor David and a group of wonderful pastors who has done a wonderful work in Malacca Parade. I met Aaron, you know, such an anointed uh, worshipper. So I was completely healed, you know, and uh, anyway, before I came back, I have a pro. <clears throat> I have a project that I have to seek God for. We have a six acres of land in the ministry school in, uh, in Brisbane. has been used for training, used for our ministry for many years, 20 over years. But we have kept it, kept it, because we are not selling it. Every day, developer wants to buy up the piece of land, six acres. It's in the prime area. God gave us in a very reasonable price, you know, a few hundred thousand, 20 over years ago. Today, people offer up to 20 million for that piece of six acre land. But it was in a prime area, you know. And uh, so we engaged an architect and a town planner trying to see what can we do with that piece of land. Uh, my four sons are involved in it. I have no doubt Joshua is in Melbourne. They zoom in with the architect. and uh, In Brisbane today, if you build houses for the poor, you know, like helping not so high, because prices have gone up skyrocket. And uh, so the government in Brisbane say, if you build any homes, and consider some of the poor people like a refuge for them. Then you can build stories. You can build high stories. So I thought that it was good because the Lord spoke to me many years ago that our place could be a refuge, you know, to help people, you know, in, in times of difficulties that we can provide them whatever, finance or food or whatever, a place to live. So I heard from the architect, I was quite happy. That he was also telling me about, you know, the, what government planned to do. So the plan was beautiful. We are probably building up a four-story place plus many other homes and so forth. So when I saw the plan, anyway, I have to travel out with it. You know, and we have not made a final decision with them. I came back to Malaysia. Up. Thank you. A prophetess shared with me, he said the Lord just spoke to her about the plan. The plan looks very beautiful, right? Everything was laid out beautifully, subdivided beautifully to do what we wanted to do. But the prophetess said the plan looks beautiful, but underneath the plan, she saw like a big cockroach like a big creature, very unwholesome creature. So when she spoke to me, I thought, oh, I was taken aback. But it was good because, as I said, we need to seek God. Uh, but that's not the final decision. So I called up my sons. I said, you need to pray. We all need to pray and see what God wants us to do. Whether that plan is from the Lord to carry out or if not, we need to hear from God again what He wants us to do. So I thought that it was very important for us to seek God, to trust God with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Many times you can do on our own strength. You know what I mean? We can do on our own strength. You know, we can do everything on our own strength, but if you've got your Bible with you, I want to just share a few verses with you, probably just to highlight for us in Jeremiah chapter 17. <coughs> Sorry. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah 
Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in men and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. I was sharing last night with a group of business people. I was sharing that the Spirit of God is wanting to raise up business people. God wants to bless all the marketplace people at this time. However, I believe that there are ways that we need to do according to God's way. That, you know, God loves justice and not robbery. In Isaiah 61 verse 8, over here is the same thing what afterwards I want to share with you. God wants to bless business people, but in a way that God will use you while in the marketplace to be a lighthouse to the world. Can you say amen? amen. That whatever we do, it is honest, it is righteous, you know, and it is uh, to give Him honor. Finance is not a problem to God. Right? Uh, this afternoon, I want to share with you that finance is not a problem to God. Probably DLS, DLS students have heard me sharing about finance uh, in the DLS in, with Dr. Vernon Falls. And, uh, but what God wants to do is to raise up a company of people that He's proud of, that He can show you as a showpiece to the people out there those who have not yet come to know the Lord, that God wants you and I to be His showpiece, handpiece, mouthpiece, you know, wherever He place you. Amen? And He will be delighted to bless you. This brother makes, already make about few millions in his process, but I felt God was really wanting to say something more than just making money. That uh, we, Let me read here. The difference between one that trusts in man and the other one is trust in God. Verse 7, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope or confidence in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out his roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. It's interesting when you trust God, it does not depend on the environment. Whatever environment, it doesn't affect you if you trust God. Can you say amen? amen? And he says that he will not fear when heat comes, but his leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding his fruit. I'm still a young Christian, nearly about 40 over years. Still learning. Still learning. But I find that Throughout my time, it was probably in Malaysia, there was at least double, two times of quite great recession. But it doesn't affect anyone if you trust Him. Right? If you follow His ways, which I want to share this afternoon, that God will be ever there to bless you financially. You know, I thank God that, you know, with my four sons, now I've got 12 grandchildren. <laughs> we never lack to give God the glory we have never lacked in God my sons have never lacked in God right with four children one two with four children two with two children I often ask them how are you how's your family they say dad we are alright we are more than we are more than enough they have never come to see me and said, Dad, we don't have enough. You know, I will share with you what my wife did when they were very young. I think probably in one of the meetings, I share this with you. You know, my wife was a doctor before she passed away, right? She was with me. She was a very, very good wife. And today I got Debbie, also another very good wife, uh, helping me in the very times of need. When we get four sons when they were young, 
my wife will used to come and give them pocket money. Each one of them a pocket money. And as immediately after the pocket money, she will come back and collect 10%. <laughs> All the tithing from... They were young, but they couldn't understand what was it about. But today, they are all grown up for 40 over years old. Right? And they have been faithfully doing, faithfully honouring God in tithes, offering, you know. And I want to encourage you, even though they are young, they may not fully understand, but they learn that why mommy comes back take 10%. But it was for that reason to show them that tithing is very important. I, you all know in DLS when I taught that over the years about tithing. I live by it. Tithes, offering, first fruit, the feasts. These four areas are very real to us. We faithfully do, faithfully do all these years. And I have to say to you, we never lack. From a zero position, Myself, I got siblings, about 12 brothers and sisters. I was the eldest boy after my sister. You know, I was the one that was privileged to go to university to study dentistry in Singapore. Came back, dad passed away. I was posted to Kelantan to be working in the government, earning 950 Malaysian ringgit. You look at Pastor Sim's size, he eats much. <laughs> I have to rent a place. I have to eat every month. I've, no, when I receive my 950, I have to send to mom straight away 650 ringgit. Because I was the one that was working, you know, as a dentist. So I sent 650 to my mom. I live on 300. And you know that. Pastor Sim loves food and I have to rent a place. Every month, zero account. There was nothing left and nothing more. It was just enough. But I was blessed. Blessed that I could help mommy to take care of the rest of my brothers and my sisters. Started with a zero. Wanted to get married. No money to get married. You know, when I was in the University of Singapore, I go to church every Sunday. A Catholic church. You know, I went to Catholic church every Sunday. I came from a Catholic school. So by habit, I go every Sunday to church. And the only thing I prayed was this. God, I want to marry a doctor. <laughs> That's all I know how to pray. I don't know how to pray any prayer. God, I want to marry a doctor. And that's finished. That's my prayer. Every Sunday I go to church, that's my prayer. And God was true. He brought a doctor to me at that time. When the doctor came to me, I have to say to her, honestly, I got no money to marry you. And she, was, she came from a very good family. And she said, that, I'm not marrying you for money. I thought, oh, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> so we came together, worked together. She was a medical doctor, I was a dentist, and we started to earn and bless mom and bless all the children until they have grown up. You know, it started with zero. And God has blessed us today, many, many zeros. And I want to encourage you, if you follow what I say, these four things, God is going to bless you with many, many zeros. Can you say amen? Let me just say something faster than this afternoon. When you return the tight 10%, if God cannot trust us 10%, then how is He going to trust us millions of dollars? True? And 10% is not ours. 10% belongs to the Lord. Right? And that's why it's so important that we return the 10 I use the word return. We don't give. We cannot give anything that is not ours. Tithing is not ours, so we cannot give. We can only return to God. Can you say amen? amen? And God has raised up a storehouse that if you are here, and this is your storehouse, you return the 10%. And the only thing God will say to you when you return the 10% is say, I trust you. So good to be trusted by God. Can you say amen? amen. 
When God trusts you, there is no limit what God can do for you. Secondly, he said, I open heaven for you. What does it mean? He says that when heaven is open, God hears your prayer. Revival comes. Favor comes. I want to share the story of Vernon Falls, Dr. Vernon Falls, many years ago. Probably you have heard that also in DLS. Sorry, I, I share a little bit of this. There was a piece of land in Ramban, you all remember the piece of land and uh, for sale. I think it's 10 acres or 50, I can't remember now. 10 acres. And the Taiwanese business group wanted to buy the 10 acres piece of land cash. Dr. Vernon also offered. He said, but we don't have cash. We have to pay installment to the owner. The owner was not a Christian. Believe it's the favor of God. The owner decided to sell the land, 10 acres to Dr. Vernon. No cash, but pay in installment. Not only that, the owner decided to give Dr. Vernon another five acres free of charge. Yeah. It's a favor of God. When heaven's open for you, one favor, I always say, is better than 10 years of hard work. I'm not telling you don't work, but I'm telling you the favor of God can bless you. Amen? So when heaven's open for you, God bless you. It takes you a lot of time to earn money, but when God's favor comes upon you, He blesses you. Anyway, I want to better come back here. Verse 9, I was sharing with the business group last night. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That word there describes about exceedingly crooked, exceedingly corrupt, incurable. I, the Lord, search the heart I test the mind. In other words, whatever you and I do, God will search our hearts and test our mind. Any secret motivation, what we say, is it really honestly that you want to do it? Or you are just saying it, right? With all sorts of deception. Anyway, let's go on. And he says that, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Verse 11 is a very interesting verse. As a partridge that broods but does not hatch. So he who gets riches but not by right, he will leave him in the midst of the days. And at his end, he will be a fool. Partridge is like a bird. Like a, like, looks like a chicken. That word partridge is a very interesting word. means that we call transmutation. Transmutation means that bird, whatever environment you put them in, it can adapt to the environment. And you really can't see that bird clearly. It's quite cunning in a, in a very word. It's a, it's a cunning bird. It's able to hide it herself or itself that people cannot see that partridge. It's just as speaking to us, not to you, but to any business group of people that acquire money by the wrong way. And in the end of the day, it will not stay. I have had the privilege to travel to some countries to share with business people like in Singapore. There are all, a lot of bankers. I, I have the opportunity to talk to them. Nowadays in Singapore, you want to preach, you have to apply to the government to preach. They have to apply for you and uh, as I say, the head of the bank is a very dear friend of mine. You know, when you go to Singapore to talk about money, everybody can smell money. <laughs> In a way, because they're all very highly qualified there with the banking world. And uh, if they feel that you are not honest, not of integrity, they will probably stop inviting you. You know? So it's important. As we enter into, we have entered into the end time period, a lot of things are happening 
things are changing in your environment, economically, socially, politically, financially. And you and I need really to know that things are moving fast and God also wants to bless you. Can you say amen? At the same time, he wants you and I to live righteously, right? To live in honesty, to live with integrity. You know, I think I shared one night with, uh, with Pastor David and the other group of pastors. They gave me a dinner. When God spoke to Moses in Exodus 25, he said, build me a tabernacle, but according to his pattern. He said, God said to, the, to Moses, build a tabernacle according to his pattern. In Exodus 25 verse 8, Moses had wonderful people working with him, Aholiab and Basilia. They were very skilled workers. But I believe the skilled workers might have come to Moses and say, hey, I got innovation. I can do something very new. But Moses must have said, no, 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 no. We have to build according to God's pattern. By the end, in chapter 40, when the tabernacle was built, the presence of God came. The glory of God came. I've shared many times to churches, the glory of God is His signature for you and for me. When you and I raise up a godly family, His glory is in the midst of you. When you build the church according to His pattern, His glory is there. The highest form that you are able to worship God is His glory. K MLF, a recent parade. I would love to come, but my wife wanted to come, but I couldn't come because I got, I had to preach in Singapore. But when they sent to me all the photos of the parade before I went to, to the church, the city mission church to preach, I saw on my phone, I wept. When I saw the glory of God came in that night, the whole sky was still. We have not seen, you have to see. It was God. This is not a change of scenery, but it was God's glory came to honor Malacca, to honor all Amen. Pastor David and the team of people, Aaron, everybody. Because when you build according to his pattern, you will descend. The eternal glory of God never changed. From the time of Moses until today, he is always there. When you and I build according to His pattern, He will be there. How you raise up your family, husband and wife relationship, businesses, His glory will be there. Amen? And that glory makes you prosperous, make you a success in whatever you do because His presence is good enough to be there with you. Amen? But sadly enough, right into the end, the book of Malachi was the last book of the Old Testament. You see, I often say, God takes back what belongs to Him. The Israelite people did not honor God in their Sabbath. You know, every seven days you need to have a rest. The land, needs, every seven years you need to have a rest. But the people of Israel never did that. 490 years have passed. They have never celebrated the Sabbath. And God came back and took 70 years away because 490 divided by 7, that is, that is one day, one year you need to have Sabbath. That's why they were taken away from Jerusalem for 70 years so that the land can, be, can rest. The land you cannot cultivate when you are in Babylon. So God takes away what that he has said. So if we don't do what God asks us to do, right? so they were taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar for, in Babylon for 70 years. And after the 70 years exactly finished, they were asked to come back by King Cyrus. King Cyrus sent them back to Jerusalem to build the temple and to build the wall with Nehemiah, Ezra, and so forth. And with the prophets, Zechariah and Haggai. 
100 years later, after they had built the temple and the wall, 100 years later from Zechariah, the people backslidden, went back to the world again. No more on fire. You know, they become to be so routine. You know, and that's why the book of Malachi came. Malachi means a message from God. The last book, very important book. The first book, very important book. Every first and last book in the Bible has significant messages. And you find that when you read that, it's frightening. Because say, God say, I wish someone will come in chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, say, someone will come and close the temple. Someone will come and close the church, we call it the church at that time. From building according to God's pattern, ending up that God said, I wish someone would close because the people were offering all sorts of sick animals, you know, lame and blind unto God. No more the fear of God. God saw them, their, back, their backs leading, you know, and they were behaving very badly got into religious marriage. God is not against interracial marriage as long as they are in the same faith. Amen? God is not in agreement with you that if we are Christian, we marry another non-Christian. That is what written in Malachi chapter 2. But Chinese marry Indians, Indians marry Chinese, but they are all Christians. No, no problem to God. God can, because interracial in Christ is not a problem. It's only interreligious, where we have different faiths and then we marry, is a problem. So the people at that time were doing all sorts of things that God did not like. And then they have stopped giving tithes and offering and so forth. You know, so in the end of the day, in Malachi chapter 4, God says this, judgment is coming. And then he says that there are I want to share this with you, how you can protect yourself and myself from judgment. Number one, God said, live in humility. Don't live in pride, but live in humility. Bible often say to us, you know, those who are successful in the business world, very often time, very difficult to talk to them. Probably it's the pride, or it's the arrogance. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. So stay humble, live humble. You know, I, God said, I give grace to the humble in James chapter 4. God give grace to the humble. I want to share this testimony. Some of you have heard me. And uh, I was in Singapore with my, with my wife, March, many, many years ago. My wife always come back to Singapore wanting to share the gospel with her relatives. That relative stayed beside the president's house. They are very wealthy. The auntie was very, very wealthy. Lived beside the president's house. So I used to follow my, my wife to go and knock at the door of her auntie's place. And uh, I have never met and I have never been there. It was my first time. So when she knocked at the door, a uh, wonderful lady opened up the door. But she dressed up very simple, very sh sort of shabbily in a way. So I was very naive. And I said to my wife, is that your auntie? <laughs> oh, no, so I said, is that the maid? <laughs> is that your maid? Uh... So I said, no, no, that's my auntie. They are very wealthy. Their husband was the Nanyang Siang Pao president, uh, chairman here. All the Lee rubber, you know, all the pineapple and the Lee rubber estates, uh, the, all the Batu Road, all the, all the high rise building, all belongs to them. They are very wealthy. But they were so simple. We never see them like put on anything, but they are approachable. So we shared the gospel with her. My wife said, lead her to Hokkien. She said, share Hokkien with her. So I have to, 
I'm very good at sharing the gospel in Hokkien. So I say, we are sinners. I don't know how to say we are sinners. So I say, then my, this auntie said, what is he doing? I said, I'm a useless person. I don't know how to say we're sinners. I forgot what my wife told me to share. But when I heard her share it like that, I actually wept. The compassion of God came over me. And it finally, she led her to accept Jesus. Then later, the daughter. Also, every of the children are multi, multi millionaire. Very successful in Indonesia trading. They trade in Indonesia and so forth. But thanks God. They, are, they live very simple. You can't even know that they are so wealthy. You know, but that's good. Just like Jesus. He said he took himself no reputation just to be a, a bond slave. I think that's the way. You know, if we can, you know, whatever we have attained, achieved, just continue to live simple. So God said the judgment will come Upon number one, the pride, the proudful, the proud people. So if we live in humility, I think that's the first thing we are spared of. Number two, he said, live righteously, don't do wickedly. You know, as what he has said, whatever business that you are doing, do it, love justice, do it fairly to people. Don't just don't just want to make money. Money is there for you. But do it rightly. Can you say amen? amen? That God will be pleased with your life, with your family. There is no point, as I say, many people gathered money, but couldn't hold money. In the end of the day, all the money almost seemed to slip, slip through their fingers. So God said, I will protect you if you live in humility, live righteously, and live in the fear of God. Eleven, I often say, nobody knows what you do. Amen. I travel at that time with my wife with four little children in Australia. I traveled to many parts of the world. Went to the jungle. Went to the interior. Stay. I went to Switzerland. I was everywhere. I live by myself at that time in the hotels, most of the time living in hotels. And I have to be very conscious of my life. My wife couldn't travel. She would love to travel in the latter part of her life when the children begin to grow up. But, beloved, God is saying to you and to myself, nobody knows us. Only we ourselves know who we are. Amen what we think, how we live, nobody knows. One time I was in Johor Bahru, right about midnight, I finished my ministry with the church. I come back to the hotel. I said, there was a beautiful young lady wanting to take the lift. I was so scared. I thought I, I dare not go in the lift together with her. A lot, no, it's not hypocrisy, but it's real. Everywhere you leave, there are a lot of things that are, may not be right, but only your heart knows. Nobody knows. Nobody is with you in terms of doing business with people. Is that fair to them? Is that fair, fair to God and fair to people? I know we all want to do a business, but is the way that we live it the cost of things today, everywhere, it's almost like artificial inflation. You charge me, I charge you. You know, today in Australia, you want to eat a plate of kway teow, noodles, it's coming to about 17 Australian dollars. Keep on going up. Everything going up. I, I'm always concerned about the people who are working with a wage. How much are they able to live like that? With a family, with children. One time I was teaching the people, say, we create our own inflation. When they charge you, you say, 
inflation. So when we charge the Bible, inflation, they charge you also inflation. Everything, everybody begins to create an artificial inflation. Ordinary wage worker with their children, difficult. They can't live like that. And that's why I believe God is saying to us and to you and to myself, whatever we can do, just be a blessing. Do it fairly, rightly, with integrity. Amen? I think I probably stopped already. I don't know what time I am in. What time is this? Oh, you got <laughs> Normally, you, what time you start? 12, okay. So, beloved, I just want to encourage you. You know, live simple. That's my philosophy for 40, 50 years. Live simple and don't simply live. Amen? Live simple. Everywhere we go, we have, you know, whether we have, we don't even have to show anybody. Amen? Can be a blessing. Go out and be a blessing. Bless people. Live simple and be a blessing to everybody. That, I believe, will be a, a wonderful mark of a Christian, especially when times are so, people are feeling very difficult with money. You know, if you have, be a blessing. Go out there, be a blessing. Continue to I thank God for my wife, Debbie. She's a very generous person. Whenever we go to the food court to eat, you know, there are people who are not able. She will always bless them very substantially. I always got amazed at that. I thought I was generous, but she was more generous. You know, but praise God. And we, we, we will never lack. Can you say amen? amen? And the more you sow, the more God comes back to you. When, when I share this afternoon, the many miracles that happen, you know, financially, God will bless you. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be blessed. So, beloved, when I met Pastor David, very outstanding pastor, I saw him, saw his fervency in prayer, genuineness as a wonderful leader. You know, so you are have, I think this space is too small for you. <laughs> you know, and I believe that God wants to expand the place or probably another place. You know, this place is not big enough. I, I believe the Holy Spirit will draw in more and more people into this house. And you are blessed to, to stay alongside with a man of God, with a man of prayer, a man whose heart is for God. Amen? Yeah. You are having a camp, is it? Or oh, not now, it's in December? Yeah, but it's uh, Christmas celebration. Okay. We will uh, borrow a place for our youth. Praise God. When I meet Dr. Wilson, I must say, you got a good man. <laughs> in Malacca, a very good man. Can you stand with me? Can I just pray a, a quick prayer for you? Father, we just thank you for the family. Even the brothers that have come down from Kuala Lumpur. Father, we thank you for this blessed family here, Lord. And thank you for Pastor David Lai and the dear wife and the children and the leaders even. I thank God for Aaron, Florence and the many others. Let your glory continue to descend upon this house. That the name of Jesus will be highly lifted up. When I was driving, when my wife drove me here this morning, I felt God is saying these few words for you. Today and afternoon, God said, my words will go forth to you to edify you, to strengthen you, to comfort you. Some of you need comforting. God loves you. God understands what you are going through. God wants to edify you, comfort you, and exhort you.
promote you. Amen. The Holy Spirit, you know, those three words keep coming. Telling me that I'm coming to comfort my people. To edify you, to strengthen you. Let me quickly share this last testimony to you. I went to see my consultant urologist in Australia before I traveled out here. I heard that he lost his wife or the wife gone back to heaven. It was my first time knowing him, but he knew all my three sons because they were playing football before. So before we travel out to here, my wife said, why don't we pray for so and so? So three of us were in a room, long queue of patients. So I asked this consultant, can we pray for you? And his answer was, no more talking up there. <laughs> no more talking up there. He must be so grieved. He couldn't say anything. He said, I'm no more talking up there. He's a Christian. I understood. I've lost my wife before too. Oh, she has finished her job. So Debbie said, let's pray for him. So he said, yeah, pray for me. But when I was going to pray, I just couldn't pray. The compassion of God came over me. I wept and I wept and I wept. I believe it was I standing beside him to let it go. All the grief inside him was all bottled up. He also wept and wept and wept. She also wept. So three of us inside the room, thank God we are not outside. Three of us were weeping, wept and wept and wept. And after that, I believe God must have released all that grief inside him. And after that, later one or two more days before I travel out, we became good friends. Sometimes God can use you anywhere in the world. Amen. There are people who need a touching hand from you, a word of encouragement from you. They've gone through difficult times. They couldn't even say to anybody. I knew that he couldn't say to anybody. When I went to see another specialist, oh, he said, I didn't know. I didn't know this other specialist, the wife has gone back. So he doesn't, couldn't say to anybody. But he loves his wife. I know. So after praying, I believe that the grief inside was all released. So beloved, you and I, whenever we go out, there are needs out there. You can pray for everybody. Amen. Pray for them. They need a touch from you. They need a word from you to set them free. Father, I thank you for Hope Church. Raise up the many men and women of God here. They, they were freely out there to be your witnesses to the many who are not able to speak. Father, in the name of Jesus, open heaven for this place. Open heaven for this house. Lord, we know that this place is not big enough. Lord, that soon, Lord, that you will extend or Lord that you will give them another place Lord to fellowship together Father I want to release right now in the name of Jesus that your, you will edify comfort and exhort them open heaven to provide for them that there is no lack in this house there is no lack in this house we thank you and bless you for every person here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's give God the glory. Amen.
She never
The door of heaven is open, and the key of David is given. The key of David is given to his people. My sons and daughters, I have given you this key to unlock the city. Take this key, my sons. To unlock the city, for I have given you the key to unlock the city. For I am with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you because of your presence, because of your grace. We surrender ourselves to you. May God your spirit rest upon us, that we will humble ourselves and acknowledge that you are God. Acknowledge that God, you are God of heaven and the earth. It is not about us, but it is you. It is you alone that we want to glorify, Lord. It is you alone, Lord. Yours is the 
glory forever. Lord. 